exists outside the observable universe's boundaries? Is it conceivable that there is a much greater multiverse and that our universe is but one among many? These issues are frequently explored in movies. Science fiction stories are rife with imaginative interactions across several realities. From superhero blockbusters like Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness to the indie hit Everything Everywhere All At Once. According to some cosmologists, the idea of a multiverse is more than just a convenient plot for your favorite movies, it's a reality. And recent evidence gathered by scientists is about to prove that. How have scientists discovered evidence that backs up the existence of a multiverse? Can we ultimately travel between such said multiverse? Join us on this voyage as we explore the possibilities of a multiverse. In a period of growth known as inflation, the universe experienced the Big Bang and almost immediately started to expand faster than the speed of light. This abrupt stretching smeared matter and radiation evenly across the cosmos, much like ketchup and mustard on a hamburger bun. After only a brief period, that expansion came to an end. But if you believe the inflationary multiverse theory, it still exists, just not in our universe where we can observe it. As it does so, it creates new universes. Even when it stops in those places, it nevertheless moves forward in other places. There would have been an endless number of other worlds formed by this eternal inflation. The concepts of parallel universes are not new to humanity. In fact, Edgar Allan Poe even imagined the presence of a boundless succession of universes in a prose poem he composed in 1848. But when contemporary scientific theories aiming to explain the characteristics of our universe predicted the presence of other universes where events take place outside of our reality, the multiverse idea truly gained fire. Those universes, if they exist, are distant from ours, inaccessible and, at least thus far, undetectable by any direct measurement. And because of that, some professionals wonder if the hunt for a multiverse would ever be truly scientific. In science, theories or hypotheses are predictions that researchers use to attempt to explain how nature functions. They and the general public sometimes refer to these concepts as theories in casual language. Scientists tend to choose this term when a scientific theory addresses a broad range of issues or explains a fundamental aspect of physics. And the multiverse is as fundamental and expansive as it gets. Scientists must test their hypotheses and then examine the findings to see whether or not the data supports or refute them before a notion can formally be referred to as a theory. Physics researchers are delving deeper into the nature of reality, making it more difficult and possibly impossible to test some of their concepts, such as the multiverse. The degree to which a theory genuinely captures reality is unknown to scientists without the means to support or refute their theories. It's similar to meeting a possible date online. Although they may appear attractive on paper, you won't know whether they are who they really are until you actually meet them. Additionally, they might be catfishing you if you never actually meet. The multiverse might also do this. If our universe is the only one, would scientists ever know? Let's examine the various hypotheses on the existence of several worlds, each with its own set of governing physical principles. But before that, what is a multiverse? Scientists refer to the concepts that more universes might exist in addition to the observable one as the multiverse. It's like, more or less, our world in the plural, perhaps even beyond what's imaginable, and that's saying a lot. Several scientific theories that depict several conceivable scenarios, from regions of space in different planes than our world, to independent bubble universes that are perpetually bursting into being, predict the possibility of multiple universes. All these theories contend that there are other realities outside the space and time we can see. And this is the one thing they all have in common. 
Okay, so why do scientists believe that there might be other universes? According to science writer Tom Siegfried, whose book The Number of Heavens explores how theories of the multiverse have changed throughout the centuries. We cannot explain all the properties of our existence if there is just one of them. Why do the basic constraints of nature exist as they do? Siegfried is curious to know. Why did our universe have enough time to create stars and planets? Why do stars have the perfect amount of energy when they shine? We don't have the answers for any of those issues in our physical theories, but according to Siegfried, there are two plausible accounts. First, in order to explain the characteristics of our cosmos, we need new, better theories, or as he puts it, we're only one of many distinct universes and we live in the one that's beautiful and comfy, he adds. Which of the more well-known multiverse theories do we know? The inflationary cosmology theory, which holds that the world grew exponentially and rapidly in the brief moments following the Big Bang, is perhaps the one that has received the greatest scientific support. Numerous observed aspects of the cosmos, including its structure and galaxy distribution, are explained by cosmic inflation. This notion initially appeared to be science fiction, albeit highly inventive science fiction. However, it provided explanations for so many intriguing aspects of our universe that people began to take it seriously. One of the predictions of the theory is that inflation might repeatedly occur, possibly endlessly, producing a cluster of bubble universes. Some of those bubbles might be places where physics acts differently from our own. So not all of them will have the same characteristics as ours. They all exist outside the scope of what we can directly witness, albeit some of them might resemble our own universe. The many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, the theory that mathematically explains how matter acts, is another intriguing sort of multiverse. The many worlds interpretation, put forth by physicist Hugh Everett in 1957, foresees the existence of branching timelines or parallel realities in which our choices have different consequences and occasionally have wildly different results. Hugh Everett contends that there are an infinite number of parallel Earths and that the probability of an experiment's result does not prove anything other than the existence of the Earth on which the experiment took place. However, the result is different on other Earths. This view states that if you had made different choices, several versions of you might be off enjoying numerous alternative lives. However, the reality you are experiencing is the only one you can perceive. Some proponents of the multiverse assert that they have discovered tangible physical proof of the multiverse. Theoretical physicists like Stanford University's Andre Lind and the University of California Santa Barbara's Joseph Polchinski claim that the universe itself contains the evidence for inflation and how it creates island worlds. This universe is enormous, smooth and flat, as predicted by inflation. It took some time for scientists to adjust to the notion that the universe's vast size, flatness, isotrophy and homogeneity should not be brushed aside as unimportant realities of life. Instead, they should be viewed as experimental data that needed an explanation, which inflation's invention offered. Similar to this, our universe appears to be perfectly designed to support life with a Goldilocks expansion rate that is neither too fast nor too slow. An electron that is just the right size a proton that has the same mass as a neutron but the exact opposite charge and a four-dimensional universe in which we can exist. Life would not be possible if the electron or proton were, say, 1% larger than what they are. What are the possibilities that all those elements would come together to generate a beautiful area of land where life could form and develop? The possibilities are vanishingly minimal in a universe that is the lone universe. But it seems inevitable that one of the universes in a multiverse that is constantly expanding should end up like ours. 
Different physical basics and laws may exist in each island universe. There will eventually be a universe where humans can exist if there are infinite mutations. Actually, the multiverse explains why we are here. Thus, our presence contributes to the multiverse's plausibility. Scientists might eventually find more concrete proof of the multiverse. They are looking for stretch marks on the cosmic microwave background, the lights that remained after the Big Bang that inflation would have left behind. These traces could help researchers determine whether inflation took place and whether it is still occurring outside of our field of vision. Additionally, if other universes and our own have ever collided, the collision would have left traces in the cosmic microwave background. That two-car collision would be recognizable to scientists. And if there are two cars, there must be many more. Do all things exist? One cannot escape the infinite in a multiverse, and infinity behaves strangely. In a multiverse, there are two different sorts of potential infinities. A single universe of the first type might have an endless extent. For example, in our universe, if space and galaxies would continue forever without end or closure. Or the second type, in which the number of distinct universes in a multiverse can be unlimited, irrespective of whether any or all of the universes are infinite in size themselves. Either infinity produces odd results. First of all, assuming Tegmark's Level 1 multiverse is infinite, it must include all of the physical possibilities. This implies, for instance, that every Star Wars situation, including ones that weren't included in the movies and even all those the writers didn't consider, actually occurs. Similarly, there would have to be a sector of space out there similar to our sector of space, with people identical to you and me, as long as there is enough room for endless random shufflings of particles and a universe of infinite size clearly has enough space. A sector of space that is identical to ours would also need to exist, with the exception of, say, one human hair that is skewed by one nanometer to the right. Additionally, there is another region of space where everything remains the same, with the exception of the identical hair, which has moved two nanometers to the left. Then all of the hairs on everyone were crooked in one direction or another. Then everything else in entire sectors of space arranged in conceivable mix and match. To be clear, in a genuine infinite world, anything that is not impossibly unlikely, regardless of how obscure, will occur, must occur, and, oddly, occur an endless number of times. An infinite world produces uncountable variants and necessitates that each uncountable variation takes place an infinite number of times. That is a true infinity's peculiar nature. These issues can all be rather perplexing, right? That's not all, either. So how can I get to myself if I wish to meet with myself? Also, can we move around multiple multiverses? Regrettably, no. At least not yet, according to scientists, because traveling between universes is not yet possible. We can't get to these multiverses unless a lot of the physics we understand that is fairly well established is incorrect. But who can say? In a thousand years, researchers might have discovered it or them and a way to get there. Does a multiverse cast doubt on God or favor God? This is a big question on a lot of people's minds. Our viewpoint changes if truly an unlimited number of universes do exist. Everything is in flux. Nothing remains the same, regardless of what you believe about God, whether God exists or not. The material world enlarges to unfathomable proportions if only the material world exists. If there is an infinite God, then science may describe that infiniteness and give it a new meaning. However, does evidence that a multiverse actually exists invalidate claims that God actually exists by undermining the current argument from design based on the fine-tuning of our universe? If there is a God, how would he interact with the multiverse? This topic calls out to be addressed if one believes in God or is unsure whether to believe in God. 
If there is a God, why would he make several universes? Why would God create a limitless number of universes? Could a multiverse elucidate what God would be like if there is a God? And if God does not exist, then what? Does the multiverse have any purpose? A world of confusion that's never ending. However, is there any direct evidence suggesting multiverses exist? There hasn't been any clear evidence to support the existence of a multiverse, despite the fact that some aspects of the universe seem to demand it. So far, there is only theoretical and, in some instances, philosophical backing for the multiverse theory. Some scholars contend that the fact that a Big Bang created a cosmos that is just appropriate for human existence may be a grand cosmic coincidence. Others believe it is more plausible that there are several physical worlds and that we only live in the one that has the conditions necessary for our survival. Some contend that it is appealing to consider an endless number of alternate tiny pocket universes, sometimes known as bubble universes, some of which have different physics or fundamental constraints. Explain to them that this is why some people take these concepts seriously, because it aids in resolving certain philosophical problems. Scientists disagree about whether the multiverse idea can even be scientifically tested, because it is, by definition, separate from our reality and unable to access. But it's possible that we're just lacking in the proper test. If our universe is simply one among many, will we ever know? Perhaps not. Multiverses, however, are among the hypotheses that may be tested in other ways, and if they pass all of their tests, then maybe the multiverse also holds up. Or perhaps a brand new finding will aid researchers in their quest to determine whether the cosmos is truly all there is. And perhaps one day, you'd meet yourselves talking to yourselves about what you've done differently. Let's just watch out. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.